Hi and welcome back to my top 7s of 2016, ending it with the top 7 best animated films that I saw in 2016. Animation is one of my favorite mediums, so that's why I save it for last. And why I separate it from live action, because animation is a medium. There were a lot of great animated movies in 2016, but these 7 stood out to me. Number 7 is Kubo and the Two Strings. Laika has had a really rough time just trying to get their movies to do well, and so far this is the one that has done the worst. While I don't think the story or the message is that clear-cut in the movie, the animation is by far the some of the best stop-motion I've ever seen. It's extremely smooth and very impressive with that big model they had. It's just unfortunate that a lot of people didn't see it. Because despite my complaints about the story and everything, it's still worth it just for the visuals. Number six is The Little Prince. If there's any movie that got shafted more than Kubo, it's The Little Prince. It was pulled by Paramount a couple of weeks before it was supposed to show in theaters. But then Netflix said, hey, we'll take it. Now I'm specifically talking about North America, because in the previous year, it had already released in Europe. And I had actually seen it before it was on Netflix. But I did watch it again just to refresh myself. If it did come out in theaters, I would go to support it, because I want to have more foreign animation. And of all the foreign animated movies to not get a wide release, I don't understand why this one didn't get one. This has American actors in it. Jeff Bridges is one of the main characters. And like with The Monster Calls, this movie does deal with loss. But it also deals with other things like childhood and adulthood. The first half of it I really like. The second half I don't really like as much, but it's still a really good movie. So if you have Netflix and haven't watched this yet, please watch it. Okay, here's where I'm going to get some criticism for putting these next five movies above those two. Because those two got the shaft, and they're also getting the shaft in my own list. But I wouldn't put them higher unless I genuinely like them that much. And number five is Finding Dory, because I like marine life, so that's obvious. While I don't like it as much as Finding Nemo, I still think that Finding Dory is a great movie. Yeah, I know it's a Pixar sequel, but still, it's a sequel to one of my favorite Pixar movies. About one of my favorite interests, marine life, and they go to an aquarium with a beluga and a whale shark. A whale shark voiced by Caitlin Olsen of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I find that hilarious. And as with all Pixar films, it has some top-notch animation. Especially with Hank the Octopus. Then at number four, here's where I get controversial. Sausage Party. Yes, I really liked it that much. A stupid idea that really should have just been a five-minute satire of Pixar films was actually a satire on religion and belief. What the hell? And actually has a good and funny Disney-esque song in the beginning by Alan Menken. I know the animators were treated badly, but at least their effort didn't go in vain. They could have been working on something like Norm of the North. But this movie, in my opinion, was actually good. Number three is Moana. Like I said with Finding Dory, I love marine life, and I also love cultures that have anything to do with the ocean. And that's why Polynesian culture especially has fascinated me. So I would have loved this movie regardless, but they went the extra mile and had the guy that did the songs for Hamilton, which I haven't seen, but I've heard was really good, and he made an incredible soundtrack, which was actually done before Hamilton. Even a couple of months later, I find myself humming some of the songs. It's the first Disney musical in a while that I've listened to the soundtrack on repeat days after the movie. And of course, the look of the film in general is beautiful. Number two is, again, a movie that I haven't talked about yet, but I did see this month. And that is The Red Turtle. It's a collaboration between Studio Ghibli and European animation studios. And the best thing about it is that you don't need to learn any language or read subtitles for this movie. Because like with Shaun the Sheep in 2015, this is a movie told without any dialogue. It's about a man that washes up on a shore on a deserted island. And I really don't want to give that much away because when I saw it, I didn't know anything about it. But I think the movie itself is about man's relationship with nature and how it can be frustrating, loving, and terrifying. If you get the chance to see it, definitely watch it. All right, number one, what is it? What could it be? What could be the movie that I have not said yet that somebody I know is really, 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 really obsessed with? It's Zootopia. I know this might be a cliche answer, but Zootopia was just really, really good. I did not expect to have a favorite animated movie of the year so early in the year, but Zootopia has so many things going for it. It has really great characters, an interesting environment, great animation, a message about discrimination that you think is going one way, then you see it go a different way. And by that, I mean when Judy first enters the police force, she's discriminated against. But then she learns, oh shit, 
I'm prejudiced. It goes both ways. There's no one way. Some may argue that the analogy between humans and animals don't really work because animals are actually different species, but I think the message works well enough for what it is. But even if you think the message doesn't come off that well, the movie is still really, really good. Like I said, great characters, great environments, great animation, great background score. It's really, really funny. There's just so much going for it, and there's so much going on in the movie that it's worth re-watching it again and again like my friend Race did. Which is part of why I like the Lego movie so much, because it's so rewatchable, and so is this. So if you still haven't seen Zootopia, which I doubt you haven't because it made over a billion dollars, I think it's still on Netflix so you can watch it there. So those are my top 7 best animated movies of 2016. Tell me your list down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Like soldiers in the middle of a campaign, growing heartened to discomfort and better interest.